Blaze Blue was one of the biggest anime fighting game franchises, being Arc System Works' main IP from the mid 2000s to the mid 2010s. While Blaze Blue isn't completely gone, it's been a long time since we've had a fighting game from this series, with the last one being Blaze Blue Central Fiction that came out in 2015. This is doing what every good Blaze Blue fan does and ignoring cross tag battle. Now, that was a long time ago, and Central Fiction is considered one of the harder fighting games that you can play nowadays. But how did the series start? And did it truly set out to be one of the harder fighting games out there? Well, let's take a look back. Let's talk about where it all started. Let's talk about Blaze Blue Calamity Trigger. All right, let's go back in time. The year is 2004, and I'm four years old. The Opportunity Rover has completed its flight to Mars and will now spend the rest of its life exploring this giant orange rock. Half-Life 2 is the latest game from Valve Software, and it will redefine the way that games do basically everything from now on. And one of the best animated movies ever has just been released. Shrek 2. Over in Japan, a small video game company has been making waves with their hit series, Guilty Gear. At this point, Guilty Gear was on its third major release, being the Guilty Gear XX series, which granted weren't absolutely massive, but they were doing pretty well considering the company's size. In fact, at this point, Guilty Gear had had six different mainline titles. Not including Isaka. that game isn't real. Why would we ever have to bring up Guilty Gear Isaka in a valid conversation about fighting games? And while all of these games are good, Arxis is still a small company. And being a small company leads to a problem. You see, shipping video games is hard. While making a functioning video game is hard, getting it into the hands of players is sometimes even harder. Getting your software onto a disc that can then run on a console and make sure that everyone can actually play it across the world costs a lot of money. And if you want to get your game on an arcade machine, buddy, let me tell you, you better remortgage the office because these things are EX. Expensive. So Arxis needed to work with a different company in order to get these games published. Enter Sammy Studios. Sammy Studios is a gigantic part of the Japanese games industry, having a net worth of 260 quadzillion dollars. I don't know, I didn't look it up. If you've never dived down the Blaze Blue rabbit hole before, you might not have heard of Sammy Studios. And you might be wondering, rightfully so, what games have they worked on? Oh, they, they published a bunch of different things. They published a Berserk game. They published Viewpoint, Zombie Raid, and uh, I, I don't know if you ever heard of it. It's a, it's a little thing. Uh, it's called Pachinko Machines. Pachinko is the main form of gambling in Japan because of its funky gambling laws. But Sammy makes several of the most used pachinko machines in Japan. So they have a lot of money. In the late 90s, Sammy decided that they wanted to branch out into arcade gaming. And so they began helping developers take their games and expand them into the arcade scene. This is how Guilty Gear X and Guilty Gear XX were able to be released in Japanese arcades, which obviously helped Guilty Gear grow a lot, since I don't know if you know this, but arcades used to be a pretty big thing for fighting games. Through this deal, though, Sammy were given the publishing rights to the games that they published. So if you want to make a new zombie raid, you're gonna have to go through Sammy. And I know how much you want to make a new zombie raid. By the early 2000s though, Sammy decided that they wanted to integrate themselves into arcade culture in a different way. Instead of publishing video games themselves and making arcade machines themselves, why don't they just use their obscene amount of pachinko money and get another company to do it for them? by buying them. So in May of 2004, Sammy Corporation merged with Sega to become Sega Sammy Holding, like some sort of terrifying capitalist fusion dance. Because Sega knows more about video games than Sammy did, all of the IPs that they were holding were just shoved over to Sega to do whatever they wanted with them. And I'm not sure if you remember, but at this point, Sega wasn't doing so hard. This was just after Sega unceremoniously bowed out of the console market and became a full-time third-party developer. And if your name isn't Sonic Team, you ain't doing shit that carries risk. So when they got all of these middling IPs that were mostly focused on arcade games, 
Gambling the company's success on a new title from one of these games doesn't sound like a good idea. Not to mention, this was in the middle of the fighting game Dark Ages. Arcades are dying out, especially in the West, and creating a new fighting game is more of a gamble than ever. More and more developers were shying away from the genre, so publishing a new, better Guilty Gear game isn't that much of a lucrative idea. And Arxis couldn't just take it to another publisher because... Sega now owns the publishing rights. And they weren't going to part with it for cheap. It's kind of depressing to think about, but not all hope was lost. Sega only had the publishing rights to Guilty Gear, and from the looks of it, it's still said somewhere in the contract that they could release updated versions of XX. All they really needed to do was create something new, something different. Four years later in 2008, they released something different. Blaze Blue Calamity Trigger hit Japanese arcades in 2008. Being created and distributed by Arc System Works, this was their first truly solo adventure. And it was... weird. The graphics of the game were absolutely amazing. It sounded like God and it played as smooth as butter with some funky chunks in it. God, some of these characters feel like an absolute flex from Arxis on how good their style was. You have trouble making humanoid characters look readable and animate good? We have a literal <laughs> blob as a character. And all of his attacks are readable. Kind of. These stages too are just absolutely beautiful. The world of Blaze Blue feels like this dark and gritty place, but you're able to see literal beauty all over if you look for it. The later games do lean more into their stages, but seriously, the dev team did an amazing job with this style. Speaking of the dev team, while Daisuke Ishiwatari is one of the most well-known developers from Arc System Works, he is not the one who took the helm on the Blaze Blue franchise. No, in fact, it was Toshimichi Mori, who is our lead designer for the entirety of the Blaze Blue series. He did leave Arc System Works pretty recently, but he has been responsible for a large portion of the well-regarded projects that Arc System Works made. His credits include being the primary designer on the original iteration of ABBA in Guild Guilty Gear, and was the lead producer on Guilty Gear, Isuka. Oh no. Some of the weirdness that generally comes with Isuka seems to have seeped its way into this iteration of Blaze Blue, since the game is definitely funky. Let's get this out of the way. Compared to the last iterations of XX, Blaze Blue Calamity Trigger is in fact an easier game. The Gatling system has been made simpler. Several moves that look like they should be special moves have been put on a single button, and depending on the version of the game, some actual special moves are on single buttons. Not to mention the game has this buffer system, which is obviously destroying skill expression and will never be incorporated in any other fighting game ever. What a dog shit system. It's best to see a lot of the mechanics of this game as a more streamlined and cut down version of the Guilty Gear XX games. In fact, what are the mechanics of this game? Is, is there a place to learn them? There's no like tutorial mode. I mean, there's a training mode. I could go around and hit buttons, I guess, but there's gotta be someone else, right? Well, we do live in 2024. I could just go on YouTube and look it up, I guess. Let's see. Ah, thank you, VGOSTs. This looks like something that came out around the time of Blaze Blue. Use the directional buttons to move your character. Press up to jump, Wait, down fuck? to crouch, and left or right to move forward or backward <laughs> in relation to your opponent. Is that a fucking opponent. infomercial lady? Or common term for this act of recovery is the Japanese martial arts word yukemi, which oh often translates to falling Oh my god! Technique. So, I'm not sure exactly what this thing is, but it's seemingly a collection of Blaze Blue Calamity Trigger tutorials. The Universal Guide is by an infomercial lady, but the rest of the guides are seemingly by fighting game players from the time. I say seemingly because some of these guys are fucking ghosts. Some of these people seem to have transitioned into the industry in different ways, and several of them became different video game developers. Like this guy who made the Tega Guide. Apparently, he went on to make a full fighting game. I wonder who it was. Oh no! This thing baffled me for days, it wasn't until I actually 
looked up a sales listing for Blaze Blue that I found out what it was. Apparently, this was a DVD that came with copies of the UK version of the game. Since the game came out in Europe nearly a year after it came out on home consoles in America and Japan, I guess the publishers had time to figure out who the top players were and have them make mini guides for each of the characters. The game was published by AK Sis in the US and P Cube and Zen United in Europe, which explains the British accent in the system mechanics video. Now, this was originally gonna be the point where I'd go through and talk about every single one of the game's mechanics, but after watching the fuck DVD tutorial video that comes separate with the limited edition of Blaze Blue in the UK. I have found out that my job has now been invalidated by the infomercial lady. UK me. So instead of going into literally every single thing, how about I just break down the most interesting ones that I found and try and pick those apart? Because there's a couple of these that show that this game's just a little, a little bit fucking broken. To begin with, this game has burst. If you see that little BB icon there on the side of your screen, that is your burst indicator. If this is on the screen, you are able to use burst. You don't know what burst is. A burst is a mechanic that gets you out of any block string or combo at the cost of some sort of resource. This game has a interesting kind of burst though. Your burst directly works with your barrier gauge which is the gauge that allows you to barrier block. Depending on how much barrier gauge you have depends on the type of burst that you get. If you have a full barrier gauge, you will get a gold burst. Not to be confused with Guilty Gear's gold burst. If you have above 50% meter but not full, you'll get a green burst, and below 50 meter gives you a blue burst. Now, these affect the actual time it takes for the burst to come out. Gold burst is eight frames, and the slowest by far is blue burst with a whopping 32 frames. And also, what do you mean the burst is green? Nah, nah, it's completely fine. I just, I didn't expect it to be green. Bursting also completely depletes your barrier gauge and puts you in danger time for the rest of the match, which means that you take more damage and you can no longer barrier block at all. Fuck that. Some of you may have also noticed this weird gauge in the middle of the screen below the timer. This is the God Libra gauge. This is... A very strange mechanic for this type of game. Basically, the more that you block, the more the opponent's side of the bar fills. When the bar reaches 100% on either side, the next attack on that character will cause them to be guard crushed. Which leads to a free combo. Now, let's wrap around back to my earlier point. This game's a little fucking broken, but that's not all. On the PC part of the game, there are these four special buttons. Do you wanna know what they do? These four buttons give you special moves from your character. This means that the PC version of Blaze Blue Calamity Trigger comes with officially endorsed 100% legit one button DPs. This game's fucking broken. Obviously, it is the first release in a new anime fighting game series. It's kind of given that the game is going to be broken in some ways. But if you're used to modern fighting games, you'd probably be amazed by just how unbalanced this game is. There are only 12 characters in the game. Most of the characters are generally considered to be okay. Playable. Four of these characters are considered to be gods amongst men, and two of these characters are considered to be so bad, you might as well gag and bind yourself, because you're going to have the same experience if you do so. There's still an old Dust Loop page for this game, and it has the old pros and cons system like they used to have. That's where I'm getting most of the information from, by the way. But some of these pros and cons are fucking insane. The front page has a disclaimer that Hakuman and Tega are considered the bad characters. One of the cons for Arakune is literally Faustian Bargain, you are a terrible person. Rachel's cons literally just says the word no! Carl is considered one of the stronger characters and still in his con list, it says you're not playing Rachel or Arakune. I think these two might be broken, chat. This roster is just kind of insane to me. Like, obviously you have the mainstays, Ragnar, Jin, Noel, Tega, the characters that you'd expect, but 
Arakune was base blaze blue? Call was base blaze blue? Bang? Fucking bang? This game is insane, but it's definitely beginning to show its age. The PC port is utter dog shit, and while I love the relic of the old video tutorial, there's no way to access it outside of a random YouTube channel. The online doesn't exist, and if you want to play single player, you basically only have the options of the story mode, which I don't have time to go into today, arcade mode, and that's it. It's training mode, I guess. But you can't deny that this game had an impact when it landed. The style of the game is on full display from the first entry. Everything about this game oozes this loud and proud, edgy style. It's dark and messy, yet beautiful at the same time. The gothic aesthetic just oozes character with these extremely beautiful pixel art designs. Like, oh my god. God. And this is a style that they would only refine more and more throughout the series' lifetime. But that's for another time. For now, I gotta go and cry that Arakune has always been in these games. See you next time when we talk about Chrono Phantasma. And no, I don't have time to talk about the story. Good night, everybody! As always, a very special thanks to 64 MHz, Almost Nap Time, Angel OS, Axel Auto Syndicate, Daniel Wiedrich, Edison Luddery, Fexo, Ethel Maxler, Game.png, Haywire and Overly, Hoffmeister Bear, I am Naoto, It's Riley, Knife and Spoon, Criticat, MP04, Mr. Clen, Nubus, Ray W, Sergeant Cubby, Slimy Gal42, Super, Storm SSP, Forcon, Tom Tanks, Velvet Puppy, and Zan Datsu for being tier 2 Patreon supporters.